Hey everyone, welcome back to the Azure AKS series. Uh, this will be the lab as I promised uh, in Azure AKS security series or AKS lab series. This video will be part of uh, both the playlist, but we are creating it for the Azure AKS security playlist for sure. The very first thing that we talked about in Azure AKS security is the access. That's what the defense in depth is as well. The, the very first thing is the access layer. And we talked about the security. How could we make it more secure by integrating it with Azure AD? So in this lab, we are going to talk about all the steps that we are going to perform to just check how it works. And let me take you through with all the steps first and let's see if we could uh, do it in this video or we need one more uh, to perform all the steps because it could be a little, little uh, big video, not that small. Uh, because we have to create everything. So let me take you through all the steps first. Let me, let's talk about the concept first. Let's see what all things we need to keep in mind when performing the lab, and then we'll start working on the lab as well. Let me share my screen. All right, so this is what we are going to uh, cover, our back in AKS. So what all steps we need to perform in this lab, we need to think about that first. How can we do that? So let me take you through with all the steps that uh, we should perform or in this lab. So the very first thing is we need AKS cluster, right? Now, when you create the AKS cluster, you can enable the Azure AD integration then and there, or if you're following mass steps, we can enable it later so that we can see where is the option, how can we do that? Then we do Azure AD integration with AKS, okay? Now, when you integrate Azure AD with AKS, it will ask you to uh, select a group. So what we need, we need to create Azure AD group. We need to create a user and add it to the group. Okay, these two steps we need to we need to perform with Azure A, uh, so that we could integrate. You can integrate uh, Azure AD without a user, but we need the group to integrate it. And we are going to use the same user. We're going to apply the permissions on this user to see how this RBAC works. Okay, then once this part is done, this is the uh, AKS part. Uh, we need to enable the R back in Kubernetes. And there is three concepts that we need to understand in R back in Kubernetes. The very first is role, then subject, and then role binding. Role is nothing, it's just a set of permissions. Subject is just like a uh, person or identity, a service account. Or binding is something which will link the permissions with the subject. Okay, that's what it is. Now, what's going to happen, we are going to create, as I said, a group and add the user in it. Now, this particular Azure AD uh, group could be utilized by Kubernetes RBAC as well when you create your YAML file for the roles. You can refer uh, the, the ID of this group in your YAML file and your Kubernetes will pick the users who which are uh, who are actually the part of this group, okay? Everything would be clear when we'll perform the lab. We're just trying to create a scenario here as of now, okay? Uh, just wanted to tell you, RBAC, is, RBAC in Kubernetes is, is an optional feature. Uh, the default in AKS is to create cluster that have RBAC enabled, and I'll show you uh, the option from where you can disable the RBAC as well. But for the production, it's not recommended. You can have all, till now, what all we were doing is just like a testing in the development environment. That's why we had the root access always. But in this lab, we are, we're gonna lose the root access and we're gonna use this user, uh, access the RBAC pods, try to delete 
with the permissions which are assigned to this user. Okay. So uh, cluster AD integration group and user, these things uh, we need. Then we need something else. And what is that? We need to create uh, Kubernetes R because I was talking about, we need to create role, role binding. We need to create cluster role and cluster role binding. So we are already clear what is role, what is role binding. Similarly, cluster, it's, it's exactly the same thing, cluster role and cluster role binding, but here the permissions are on cluster, okay? We already talked about this cluster role and role in the previous videos. Just, just to refresh your mind, a role is more about inside the cluster or the, uh, or the uh, resources which are uh, namespace related, not on the entire cluster and the cluster is for the entire cluster. Let's put it this way, okay? Now, uh, once we have role, when, uh, we, we need to create one role and then the role binding, one cluster role, then the cluster role binding. What we're gonna add this binding to, we are gonna add this binding to the user that we have created here and role binding to the group that we have created here okay so what would happen our user because in this group we have this this user so ultimately this user would have both the access uh, because group has the cluster role binding or cluster role attached to it and user is directly added to the role binding now how can we see that how, what can we do to just check how it is working? The very first thing, once you enable the Azure uh, AD uh, integration in the, in the AKS cluster, then what happens uh, when you use that user to work on this AKS cluster, there would be another prompt, which is something like that. When you try to run the kubectl command, uh, you will you'll get this kind of prompt after the authentication where it will say you have signed into the Azure Kubernetes service. Okay. And I'll, I'll show you when it, it, it comes. It may be a little confusing this particular uh, video, but I, I, I bet you, you, everything would be clear once we perform these step by step. Okay. Now uh, we have uh, cluster role and cluster role binding on the group. And let's do, let's give it a read only access on the cluster. Okay. And let's give it a role binding, a delete access uh, in the namespace. Okay. So when you try to delete parts in the namespace, it would be able to delete because if it it's the same namespace uh, this user is working upon. But if this user is working upon in a different uh, namespace, it would not be able to delete those parts, okay? Because on the cluster role, it has only read-only access. So user might see those parts, but user can't delete those parts. But where it is directly assigned to the user any role, user can delete in that particular namespace. Okay, so this is what we are going to perform in the lab and this will be very interesting. Uh, let's see how it works. I think I should create another video for that because it's gonna be a little longer. So let's meet in another video where we will perform all these steps. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching.